time to go. Uh, this is a special call meeting to uh, consider Mr. Rick's uh, proposal. And uh, uh, we will be taking a few minutes on this. But, uh, Where's Mr. Riggs? Right here. Mr. Riggs, can we, we meet with Matt just because you asked us to? I appreciate that. Uh, you know, two or three years, three or four years ago, the zoning uh, commission was uh, approved. And uh, it was approved for all the citizens of Hamilton. Uh, it was for the protection of the citizens of Hamilton. And uh, you know that we have requested you to come two or three times to the meetings, and uh, you failed to show up. I didn't know about those requests. Really? That's right. But, uh, you know, this committee does not look favorable on someone that deliberately violates that order. I didn't do that. Okay. But uh, <clears throat> does the committee have anything to say? I mean, what's the recommendation that he is proposing? Do we have clarification on that? Because I don't think the application that was filled out was filled out correctly. No. I, I believe on that case it was R1, and that was through discussions with Mr. Rick and myself. But then, Upon further discussion, it was like R3, I believe, is, is what he's requesting. He's requesting R3 now. And right now it's on M1. Is that correct? Or there are actually two parcels uh, side by side. One of them is B2, general business, and the other is M1, uh, heavy industry. So, uh, Mr. Reeves, we'd uh, hear you, like to hear your proposal. <clears throat> well, you me stand up here. Yes, sir. But when it was when this was approved, I, I had a subdivision drawn up. We got 60 lots over there. So, and I had a uh, when it was approved with the city before my subdivision, and then I didn't know that it was rezoned until I applied for a permit. To Finish the house I had started over there because when it was approved, I had a very favorite. My, my son in law, Curtis Gillen, to come down here and visit the city because my wife was dying there of a brain tumor. And uh, so she died, and uh, I really didn't want to do anything for a long time. And I did not know that it had been rezoned until I applied for the uh, permit to, to, start, uh, to finish that house over there. And I never did get that permit. And I found out then it had been rezoned to industrial, I believe, is what I was told. But it needed to be changed back to the subdivision that was approved before. And that's what I asked it to do, to change it back to residential so I could develop. I've got a half a million dollars invested in that. Wait, is all of it uh, been rezoned? All of it was resolved. All of it was. Yes, sir. Yes, right. There's uh, two parts. One was the business and one was the light manufacturer. Which one are you? Oh, you All of it. All of it. How many acres? How many acres? Yes, sir. There's 15 acres there. I've got a if you like to see this, I've got a flat a plot of it, if you don't have one. Mr. Riggs, Tim. I think we saw one last time. Okay. Yeah. Tim, pursuant to our meeting, was part of that, you wanted to do the R3, but the other part you wanted to do the R1? Yeah, I right? the, the part next to the nursing home, I'm going to put modular homes on there for the ramp. And they requested for me to do that. The other I'm going to build houses up. Like your Like I planned to originally. Yeah. And he has submitted plans with Tim. Uh, I've got the plans to help settle the modular home. That's the modular home. Did you ever perk that plan? I didn't, but Barry Frederick did. 
I'm not asking for anybody that wasn't approved before. Before what? Before this was formed. Yeah. Because it was approved by the city on uh, the previous administration to subdivision one. Can I say something? I, I was on the council. I don't know either. I like to somebody could in tell what was approved and what was Yeah, approved. I would I would speak to that. I went back through the minutes and um uh, Jan and different ones went back through the minutes. We never approved a subdivision. According to Scott, it would not have been necessary at that time because we didn't have zoning. So uh, it, it was not approved by the county. No. And there were some components of a of a house Division of that were approved, such as the roads, the streets. He had a plan, yes, yeah. that we looked at. Right. Uh, I think there were some modifications that needed to be done to his plan. Yeah. And did we approve or not? you approve or not? The changes that we made on the original plan, the roads and some fire hydrants, we, you did submit that, and we did go in there and say we needed the width of this road, some of the cul de sacs. Fire hydrants placed in different spots, and then it was presented back. And we changed it. And it was changed, yes, sir. Yeah. That was on the plans that you submitted. Right. Tim, you 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 approved his plans? No, we approved the width of the roads. We looked at it from the fire department standpoint on the width of the roads for fire hydrants. We suggested he make changes on the width of the roads, on the cul-de-sacs, and moving some fire hydrants in there. I think we added the song and brought them back to Mr. Riggs, and he did on the original plans. They were changed. Very pregnant. That is all that I had to do with the. So what he's got now, you're okay with? The, the drawings he's got now. Yeah, with the. Uh, Plans that he submitted for the uh, <coughs> modular homes. Well, that's not plans for the roads. No, this yeah. is not plans for the roads. But this is saying is what we have approved before. The plan that you've got right there is just it's for the home. plans on the mod right. particular house he's got down there. Right. Can you plan right now? One or two. How many are you going to put down there right now? Well, I was going to put four, but I ran into this problem, so I cut it down to one. But I've got that one fill, and I've got people coming in here from 23rd to, to uh, fill it up. Eight people in that one house, but I'm going to put them in a motel so we can get the same time. If they don't kill me. <laughs> Nathan, let me up to uh, 
in the engineering done on the driveways or the roof? Yes. But you talking about did we? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'll do it with Mills and Kaywood did. Same That's what he have to have. Now, will he or will he not have to have those plans for what he's doing proposed now? That's, that, that's an issue for the council at this point. The, the dedication and acceptance of the roadway in progress right. will be an issue for the council. Right now, what you're doing down there is on the main, on Dr. Sasser Drive, right? Yes. So it wouldn't require masking, it wouldn't require any uh, special road work or anything else. As long as the lots that are developed have Based access to the street. And as long as the utility company and the council are in a position to accept the improvements that are being offered, if there are any that are being offered in the city to accept the maintenance of, then everything's fine as far as the utilities and the uh, street access. When our main purpose, and I'm speaking out of turn, but our purpose is to see whether or not this is the best for the community. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to analyze this and have the meeting. If I'm right, Bill, we're going to yes. decide whether or not this is in the best interest of the community. And if it is, we're going to approve. And if it's not, then we're not. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, the, the, the zoning issues that have been raised here, I'll stand up, maybe I can hear me a little bit. The zoning issues that have been raised here are. Um, that the property is currently there's two parcels, one is zoned M1 and one is zoned B2. But there's a question of what the appropriate zoning should be for the intended use of the property. We have a plan that has been drawn out that shows uh, some of the intended use, but there have been some questions along the way about what, what features of that plan may have changed. That plan, uh, I will say, was approved prior to the passage of the zoning ordinance. Um, the, the layout of the lots and the configuration of utilities were all things that were decided prior to the zoning ordinance. And in fact, in this particular development, those are all features that are not governed by the zoning ordinance. The configuration of the lots as far as the sizes, the location of the structures on the lots, the type of structure with respect to manufactured home as it's defined by the ordinance versus single family residence, again, as defined by the ordinance, as well as the ultimate use of that property are the things that are, are governed by the zoning ordinance. So in this case, what we need to know is to move the property, to consider a request to move the property from a combination of B2 and M1 into the appropriate zoning, what area of the property is going to be developed as single family, multifamily, et cetera. Um, once we have those dimensions, we can we can actually say which areas need to be rezoned for what. To that end, the R1 district would allow only single family residences. The R3 district would allow a variety of one family, two family, and multi-family residences. The R3 designation is much more flexible, but it also has a higher utility requirement, a higher access requirement. Um, it, it would allow all of the things that we've been discussing today, and, and then some, and then additionally multifamily, two-family as well. But it would have a, a higher standard of development because you'd have to have large utilities. You'd eventually have to have some road coming in and out of the property. Um, but the question at issue today is, what is the intended future use of the property? What portions of the property are going to be requested to be rezoned into those uses? And then. What, is the, what are the next steps for the Planning Commission to, to continue their consideration of those questions? Okay, thank you, Nathan. <clears throat> can, you, uh, can you give us that information maybe by next Monday? Get there you are now. Okay. Uh, I think there were only eight lines you were proposing yeah. in that R3. No, may I come up here? Sure. Let's yeah. find you up. May I come up with you for this chair? <laughs> I know, we had all the time. I had things there. Uh, I made a bunch of copies of all copies. I put them down here. I don't have any more than you, but I got them all. And, uh, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go look at it upside down. Uh, there's a lot, here's a lot number, right here, a lot number 23, 
is the one I've got the house on right now. And I'm going to put uh, modular homes on lot 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 29, 28, 27, 26. This is this spot right here. So it goes up front to the curb. Let's go. Yeah. 29, so it's going to take them. I'll take them. Just this part right here. Well, it shows where the nurse is going to be. Uh, right here, this is the retirement center. Yeah, that's the retirement center on the other side of the nursing home. Right. So you've got two lots between the Yeah. And those proposed schools. Modular homes. The rest of these I'm going to build. All of these are modular homes. Yes, that's the plan. That's the plan. The reason I'm building those is because the ramp has to be built. I had the whole lot of orders. I decided to cancel three of them because we had too many problems. Are those roads in place to get to them? Yeah, this road is right here. Yeah. How'd you get to them? Right here. I'm not to so you change them? Change them. 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 Yeah, not Well, it's not a uh, house with four bedrooms and four bathrooms. So four individuals in separate households. Yeah. So more than four. Four, four or more. It's okay. Yeah, we don't, we I don't, don't typically have we don't typically get into the business of defining families. Right, right. So I understand that. So, yeah, that's I don't put me in there with you. And more houses than you did. Yes, right. Spaces between each mobile. They're not mobile homes, they're modular Well, how much space is between you? Well, this is about a 200 foot lot right there. The lot is a modular 60 foot lot. How much space is between that one and another one? I don't know exactly, but probably about speaking of eight. Probably a That's a 200 foot wall. Oh, this is a 200 feet, and that's about 100 and something. That's 100 feet. And there, I mean, Kaywood, Hank is engineering. Now Kaywood and Mill, they did this work. Based on the code. Nice. It costs money. <laughs> so I believe, just to kind of restate the premise here, I believe the proposal on the table is have the section that is currently zoned B2 mm -hmm. and additionally lot 17 rezoned B2 or That's right. And to have the section that is zoned manufacturing to be rezoned to A1. Right. Previously, we looked at the lot sizes and they are all conforming lot sizes yeah. under the zone ordinances. Um, the one thing that I would caution is that the development standards of the National Flood Insurance Program would apply to the intersection of property right off the floodplain boundaries. There are construction elevations, a certain number of holes per square feet, that sort of thing that would be complied with. Given this information and the accuracy, obviously, is serving great accuracy, we can accurately draw these districts on the map. We can accurately present the uh, request and the answer. And we need to show that road extended. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Right down on the right. That's what the sewer is like. Yeah, the sewer is right here. The road and the water is right over here.
I don't think <clears throat> putting a bunch of mods down there is going to be access access to the city. Well, it's about you. what it built, about what you got across the street. Right, for me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's going. It's not going to hurt what's across the street. No. It's not right. going to hurt. That's what I'm saying. But, but you know, it, depending on what all went on, it might be a little irritating to the uh, Well, this is not the only rental property I own. No. I own some more. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. I ain't got no decision to make around. <laughs> not too old to take care of things like that. Well, please, aren't you home? They stuck me up on concrete. Well, again, this is an old frame model I'm building this time. They put it on concrete. Well, it's a lot of home. It's not. They're on the frame. Oh, yeah, that's on the frame. This one is. Yeah. That's on the frame. They can be set on the concrete. It's on the frame. You want to break around on it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a little golf around there. Mm -hmm. They take the rails out here. They take the toms off. If they're built on the rail, you can't take the rails. But they're not, they're not the matter of fact, the home is the plot. It's governed by holding out another code. So this can't meet the electrical code? Yes, sir. I'm putting those down. Take my chance with the kids if I can. Y'all got any more questions? I'm satisfied we've got enough information to make a decision. If you need anything, call me. Okay. Nathan, you think we got all the information we need now? Feel satisfied? We, we got all we need from Mr. Reed. I believe so. Okay. Do we need to do another application? You know, that one is incorrect. Yeah. 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 I wonder if we need to yeah. do it. Yeah, if we can get correct. an amended one that just reflects what we discussed a moment ago. Yeah, just, um, I mean, can we just change this one? <laughs> or we don't yeah, have to sign another one or something? Or can I? Yeah. Sometimes, very, very little difference. Sometimes, 
they're produced. I mean, yeah, the, the codes could be could be more or less in certain situations. Mr. Chairman, comment from the floor, sir. There's also a distinction between uh, manufactured homes and single-family homes that's found within the definitions within the zoning ordinance. And I can read them, but it boils down to chassis and wheels. That's the difference, essentially. If, if the home or the structure is constructed with a chassis and wheels, then it will fall under the category of manufactured housing if it is not modular, site-built, built-in panels, et cetera, then it will fall under the definition of single-family. This is not what we consider modular by the zoning. Yeah. If I may remind you all, we've done been, that, had been down that road in that discussion. He's got the definition of this for you. Yeah. Um, in this situation, mod versus manufactured housing, HUD house, is no different in our zoning. Is that a correct statement? I have not seen the structure, so I do not know. Uh, does it have, is it built on a chassis? It, it is. is. It is built on a chassis. chassis. Then it would be a manufactured home. Correct. Under the definitions provided in the zone. Under so, our definition. Yes. Not the definitions that Wayne is talking about. That is correct. But for our purposes, we're going to be one, we're going to the other. I, I just don't know if we're going to. I'm yeah, if the structure in question is. By, by the definition of, of the zoning ordinance of manufactured home, then the designation for the site must either be RMH1, which is manufactured home park, or R4, which is uh, for, allows for manufactured home, homes on individual lots. That's what it is. It's almost a chassis. <clears throat> I mean, because these prints are on frame mod. What you got is a double wide trap from the home. Well, <laughs> whatever, that, whatever what it is, it, it, by, our, by our zoning rules and, and designations, it, it's it's manufactured house. Not much. Which the request that we no, just entertained would no, not correct. That's would not cover that. He's going to need to modify his request again. To, to an R4 would we'll seem most appropriate. Where'd he go? If he's standing outside, now would be the time to do this and not have to have another meeting over it.
or a grandson that wants to relocate here for commercial business. And uh, my question is, what what all was involved in getting the piece of property that's already zoned from mobile homes uh, changed to commercial? A detail shop, a car wash would, in my opinion, be considered a commercial uh, operation. Now, he uh, had a similar business in uh, Columbus, Mississippi, and he wants to come back. <coughs> so, in doing so, those two lots were two old home spaces that border Highway 78 directly across from WMTY. And they were rezoned residential. And, and that gets me back to where I first started. Uh, I looked at the map one time and I thought I was straight. Sure enough, I wasn't. Come to find out, those two spaces directly below my residence was part of the old home park had been rezoned residential. Now, I've applied to get this thing changed to commercial for the, one, for the purpose of this state. Uh, what time frame will we talk about? And, uh, the board or the planning commission to make a decision on two lots. And have you brought us your paperwork, what you want to do? Yes. You have uh, one of them. I just brought it in this afternoon. This yeah. Okay. We'll meet Monday night and we'll be glad to consider that. Yeah. I got him a copy. He's got, Nathan's got a copy. Nathan? If, if, with your permission, it may be useful for me to run down the entire process, since I believe that's the question that has been put forward. Process of rezoning the parcel of property begins with a citizen coming to town hall, reviewing the zoning map, and filling out this application here. This application, what it tries to do is capture what the current zoning of the property is and what the intended future use and appropriate zoning of that property are. Once this is complete and is on file with now Marla in the City Hall office, it is presented to the Planning Commission. It has to be received a minimum of 14 days before the next regularly scheduled Planning Commission meeting in order to provide time for staff review. Now, the Planning Commission can, at its discretion, waive that requirement and hear that request earlier. Um, it, it has done so in the past and, and can do so you know, with, with this request as was stated by the Chairman. I have a request for that big way. Once the Planning Commission has heard the request, they hold their official meeting, their regularly scheduled meeting, they will forward a recommendation for or against the requested rezoning to the City Council or they will request, will request additional information from the applicant, clarifications that might not be uh, completely understood within the application itself, um, additional requests about the dimensions to be rezoned, for example, if only the, the front portion or one parcel is to be rezoned, uh, the Planning Commission can request additional clarifications. When they have enough information to make a determination about what they recommend, they forward that recommendation to the City Council. With that recommendation begins a public notice period that is established by state legislation that at a minimum will run 22 days. There will be two insertions, one complete insertion in the newspaper, and one synopsis, and a period of 22 days will pass at a minimum before the City Council can, by law, hear that request. Once that period is passed and appropriate public notice has been given, the City Council receives the request and at their discretion places it on the agenda and takes action either for or against. As was stated earlier in, in the uh, commission meeting this evening, the action of the Planning Commission is to make a recommendation to the Council. The authority to zone property in 
the state of Alabama and across the nation is a legislative authority that is entirely within the discretion of the city council. Once the council has taken action, there is a, an additional publication requirement before that ordinance is effective. That is usually um, a, uh, in a town such as Hamilton that does have a newspaper published here, it actually has to run in the paper again for an additional synopsis before it becomes effective. That entire period can take anywhere from 36 to 60 days, I would say, just depending on how much additional information is required, the publication requirements, uh, and at what stage the application is received to appear on the agenda. There's a fee involved, correct? Um, I know. I know. Yes. $300 fee for any Well, I mean, just for the public to know that yeah. there's also a $300. We didn't do that for a long time. We gave right. people the chance to come in before we Marla, when, when did you get this paper? This morning. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Commission, I understood that there was some further clarification that we needed to do. Uh, we're back. Yeah. And we're back. I, yeah, I apologize for the confusion. Um, we, the, the question was raised, I think, after y'all had left about what the definition of a, a manufactured home was versus modular or single family. In the Hamilton Zoning Ordinance, the definition is essentially <coughs> single. Perfect clarity. I will look it up a little bit. Read it. What I said earlier was the definition is essentially it's built on a chassis that is considered a manufactured home. Page 54 of the ordinance. A manufactured home, a transportable structure which exceeds either 8 body feet in width or 32 body feet in length, built on a chassis and designed to be used as a dwelling with or without permanent foundation when connected to required utilities. This structure is also known as a, quote, mobile home and as a, quote, house trailer and all have the same meaning in this ordinance. So that, the interpretation of that definition is that if it is built on a chassis, whether it's one component or multiple components, that it is classified as a manufacturing That is not true. Wait, tell you that. Wayne, yeah. before, before you get into that, let's just say that, let's just request that the, the change be made for manufactured housing, that'll cover that. Okay. And uh, because if we do it the way, we, we'd have to change the ordinance in order to do what you want. Well, I understand. And it's yeah. not that, that we're arguing with the definition of the Federal Housing Act. Yeah. It's just the way that's written. Right. So well, that's why I was saying, say it was all a, yeah. a modular home that's built under different, different codes, codes in a, in a manufactured home. Is right. That right, Steve? Yes, that's correct. That's right. But we're already right under the model. definition that the right. state uses, and because of that, we're going to have to modify your request right. to make it work for what okay. you want to do. That's fine. I just want to make that I understood that, you know, the two different things. They are. And, and we would request at this time that that be made. And, and an appropriate zoning designation for that request would be R4. Right. Okay. We're going, well, to, we're going to change your request to R4. That's right. Yes, we do. We've changed it to R4. I'm going to change this R3 to R4. And that'd be just for those lots that were requested to the R3 designation. Right. Yeah. That's right. Again, I apologize for my confusion. Otherwise, you're not the only one on that. I'm learning. I'm not confused. I'm learning. Thank you. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm we get out of here so you know. I just got one more question. What would preclude me from proceeding to prepare this particular land for purpose that I'm asking to be changed to be uniform? I'm talking about foundation and uh, concrete work. We're going to weigh that period. Right talked about we're going to weigh that we're going to discuss that Monday night okay can you come next Monday night okay. we meet at night. six o'clock six that'll be fine thank you okay
Any other comments? Can I ask, Mr. Chairman? Yes. The, because we were up there, and I was taking photos, but a lot of them may not have understood to yet. The public will want to know before. When, where is this exactly as far as the, the general terms where the location is? It's next to the nursing home. Then next to that is the modular or mobile home or whatever we want to call that. That will be there, right? One unit there. That's correct. Yes. And then will his subdivision be sort of where? Will it be on the other side of that other? It wraps route? around. It wraps around that. It wraps around the modular area. Okay. You can have this right here. No, no. It wraps, 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 wraps around the nursing home. It wraps around the system. The system. Assisted living. Assisted living. Okay, I just for the yeah. benefit of I mean, And this mobile home, manufactured home that he's got down there already, is next to the nursing home. And there's another lot between it and the assisted, assisted living. So there's two lots on that road. And he's going to have to put a road between those two lots in order to get into the rest of this. Okay. That clarifies. That clarifies some. The only other question I'd have is the, the and I understood there is, the lawyer can tell me, but the, is there an order, a uh, uh, an order that was received, court, received this week to prevent him from putting a unit down there? Is that still in effect? I don't know anything about that. I'm not talking about that. There was a cease and desist. There was a cease and desist. It's not a court order, but just a letter from the city. Right. That has nothing to do with us. <laughs> well, it's related, so yeah. that's because that he was continually. He, working placed, down he there. placed it down there before you could approve it. Yes, okay. he got the cart ahead of the horse. Okay. Okay. If no other comments, we'll send the message. Adjourn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah.